know, I've been a journalist, an editor, a writer all my life, but I guess um, maybe if I, in another life, I might have been a theater producer, because I do love live media too. So maybe that's my lost profession, you know, director of uh, musicals. <laughs> When I moved to start the Daily Beast, which is uh, an online news site, um, I'd never been in digital journalism, but I was very keen after doing print for so many years to move into the new metier, obviously, of online. And actually, in a way, it appealed to my sense of impatience because now it was just my black iPhone texting immediately that something happened, getting all these writers that I know to respond, and they did. It's like having a fish on a hook. I couldn't believe what it felt like when a piece caught on, and suddenly you felt all of these readers, you know, logging on and, and the sense of traffic uh, growing. Uh, and we had a, a chart in the office which showed the traffic, you know, one by one by one by one, up, 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 up. Very, very exciting. It's like a ticker tape. It was almost like the adrenaline of trading, the trading floor. I guess I am a news junkie and I like to, to explain, to contextualize, to, to create the agenda of the story, uh, whatever it is, whether it's what's happening with the refugees or whether it's why everybody's obsessed with Kim Kardashian. It's all news as far as I'm concerned. And I like to be the editor that is uh, in the middle of that. I love that. And I like to lead the news too. I like to be able to set the agenda. Now with live events, which is what I'm doing a lot of now, that's very exciting too, because I see that as a sort of theatrical journalism. I see it as uh, combining uh, you know, the theater skills with journalism skills. When I started Women in the World, nobody at that time was telling the stories of these incredible women who were the great role models that we never hear from. Women who were leading revolutions in Liberia, women who are uh, working in the heat of the Arab Spring, women who are battling uh, uh, for rights of women in India. And those women are uh, really inspiring because they have nothing uh, on their side. And they're fighting culture, they're fighting political uh, repression, they're fighting lack of economic inclusion, they're fighting very often tyrannical uh, despots, they're fighting, uh, they're also very often uh, the victims of war in which they played no part, but are now having to deal and pick up the pieces with the war that they never signed up to do. So those women are my heroes, and I wanted to hear their stories told to a bigger audience, and I was determined to bring them to the stage, because the more I met them, which I had done through some of the NGOs that I, that I work around, you know, I kept meeting these women. I thought, wow, aren't they, there they should be rock stars. These women should be as famous as anyone we've heard of because they're so impressive. You know, I feel we're an insular world right now. We're shut in too much. We are focused on our own cultures. And we must engage with the world. I mean, as we see with the refugee crisis, if you don't pay attention to what's happening in the world, it's suddenly going to literally wash up on your shores. So we better get engaged. And that is really my mission, is to engage people with the world.